Well, hi there, and welcome back to Return to Yehovah. Um, today I want to talk about, well, the subject of the deity of Messiah, let's say, but a little bit different than what you might be expecting. Um, uh, actually, several years ago, uh, a good buddy of mine and I got in a discussion with some other friends, um, fellow believers and everything, and they had gone from being believers to finding the Torah. And the more they, they read or learned or listened to YouTube videos and other teachers out there, um, they started questioning whether maybe Yeshua or Jesus wasn't exactly who he said he was. And they weren't sure if they could trust the New Testament and some of that. And, um, but one of the big sticking points was this idea that from what they understood or how they saw it um, they felt like like Christianity in general you know uh, basically taught that Yeshua or Jesus was God or is God or however you want to say it and you know every time that comes up now if somebody would say that you know he can't you know is part of God or I mean, he and the Father are one, and I know the whole Trinity idea, which really doesn't seem to, to uh, be as clearly taught in the Bible as we're led to believe. Um, but I don't want to get into that either. I'm sure that'll set somebody off, but honestly, if you search it out, you may find out it's not quite, again, what we've been taught. You know, there's a lot of things we've been told over the years or over the centuries that aren't quite what's in the Bible, okay? Anyhow, but <clears throat> the more we had this discussion and other people discussed whether Yeshua is God or not, and, you know, there's so many different groups out there, and the, you know, there was one group that used to have uh, oh, um, meetings and, uh, what did they call it, like conferences and stuff, and they called him the Logos. Instead of the word, they used the Greek term, the Logos, and all that kind of stuff, and um, anyhow, it, it all seemed to be around, you know, him being God, almost as if God the Father left his throne and came down. And I don't think that's what the scripture teaches at all, you know. But I remember saying more than once uh, to some friends of mine, it's like, doesn't the Bible calls him the Son of God. And for some reason, God the Father, Yehovah, chose to call him my son, my only begotten son, you know, whatever. God chose that so we could understand the relationship between him and Yeshua. I don't know why we have to, you know, wrestle with these things and try to make it something it's not. Now, I'm not one to take anything away from Yeshua. And um, he absolutely has to, you know, be deity in some way. I think the hard part is... Our little minds, mine especially, can't explain things that are of God. They're so much higher than us. But, um, so this prompted me several years ago to do a little study about, well, you know, was he ever called God in the Bible? Or, you know, how many times was he called Son of God or whatever? And um, there was actually quite a few where he's referred to as the Son of God. And... To be honest with you, rather than just saying, okay, there were 15 times or 25 times or whatever the number may be, what good does that do you? You know, that doesn't help anybody. Um, but so, you know, I put these all together just on a, uh, you know, little Word document or whatever. And I don't know if I'll do them all in this one video because I'm trying not to go too long. Like sometimes I start out wishing to be short and it goes longer. Um, but for now, I'm just focusing on the four Gospels, all right? Um, and I'm going to just read off one or two verses at the most just to kind of give the, the picture of what was going on. And each one of these is when Yeshua was referred to as the Son of God, okay? Um, I don't know if that, that may not be interesting to you, but it, it's just one of those things I think, to me, it's interesting. And I, uh, I think it makes the point that God calls him his son for a reason, why we can't just accept that and go on? I don't know. Um, all right, so let's start with Matthew. <clears throat> I'm going to try to go in the order of the Gospels. And Matthew 4, 3. Now, this is when Yeshua is in the wilderness. He'd been 
fasting for 40 days and 40 nights or whatever, and the tempter shows up, you know, of course. Now it says, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones be made bread or become bread. A couple verses later, he says to him, now, you know, of course, Yeshua responded, but I don't want to make this, you know, read all of those, okay? But you can look them up. Um, and also, just for the record, I'm going to try to put the whole list of scriptures on the blog that I mentioned in a previous video, and I'll put a link to it at the bottom so, you know, people can go and look at each one of the verses if you if you choose to, as opposed to uh, writing them down real quick or whatever, um, nowadays, there's so many programs out there, you could probably just do a search Son of God, you know, for the New Testament or for the, you know, the the Gospels or whatever. Um, anyhow, so Matthew 4, 6, uh, the devil would have said to him, it was the devil or the tempter, said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. In, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Okay, so that's the enemy, the devil calling him that twice so far. Um, now Matthew 8, 28. When Yeshua had come to the other side, uh, they, they got in the boat and went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, uh, to the country of the Gergesenes. There, now, different accounts say different things, but there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Yeshua, or Jesus, you Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now, we've all you know, probably read and heard that that uh, passage and it's you know pretty cool you know how it plays out but here you got now a couple of demons or you know however many now I guess it was many in that in that man or those men um, they knew him by name and they called him the Son of God <clears throat> Matthew fourteen thirty two talks about when they got into the boat the wind ceased so. That must have been when Yeshua walked down the water. You know, Peter came out to him at first and all that stuff. But anyhow, it was a terrible storm and everything. But, you know, once they got into the boat, then the wind stopped. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. So his own disciples, you know, recognized that. Later, Matthew twenty six sixty three. Um, this must have been... Well, this is while the... Uh, the Pharisees and religious leaders were, you know, trying to do a trial of him or whatever. Um, but it says, But Yeshua, or Jesus, kept silent. And the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, or the Messiah, the Son of God. And Yeshua said to him, It is as you said. Which would be like, you said it, yeah. You know, or, you know, he just didn't say the words, yes. You know, I am, or whatever. But he said, it is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you, hereafter, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Now, you can read the rest of that, and you know that just made them go nuts because they were so angry. But, you know, he was, you know put under oath, you know, to tell if he was the Messiah, the Son of God, and he basically said, it is as you said. You know, so even the religious leaders equated the Messiah with being the Son of God. And I point that out because there's quite a few people that, you know, well, just, just the whole idea of him, you know, being equal with God or deity or, you know, having some kind of divine something, you know, just bothers people some people it's just hard for them to deal with or they don't want to accept it excuse me matthew 27 39 and those who pass by oh, this is while he's hanging on the cross but those who pass by blasphemed him wagging their heads and saying you who destroy the temple and build it in three days save yourself if you are the son of god come down from the cross 
So obviously these are people that, you know, had heard him say or somehow, you know, heard the rumors that he claimed to be the Son of God in some way. But uh, a couple verses down in verse 43, he's, they, they were saying, He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. You know, um, and then a little bit further, still in Matthew 27, verse 54, um, now it says, So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Yeshua saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. So you've got all these different people, you know, not just a couple, but several different people saying, he is or was the Son of God. Um, now that was Matthew. Let's look at Mark. And actually Mark 1.1 1, 1 begins with the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All right, in Mark 3, skip down there. Uh, verse 11, And the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, so this is talking about, you know, different times when unclean spirits you know saw Yeshua they fell down before him and cried out saying you are the son of God but he sternly warned them that they should not make him known you know so again you've got you know unclean spirits or demon spirits you know coming out and saying you are the son of God you know and um, later in Mark uh, just one more here for Mark uh, 1537 and Yeshua cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. So he's on the cross. And then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And this is again the centurion. But it says, when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that, or saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Now, I understand that's a duplicate of what we had just said from Matthew. Um... But, you know, Matthew and Mark were probably not written, you know, together at the same time. They were, you know, separate accounts and all of that. So, um, but just showing that it continued through all the Gospels also. Uh, Luke chapter 1. Now, this is kind of cool. Um, verse 34. Uh, this is when Mary is speaking to Gabriel, the angel that came to her. And she said to the angel, how can this be, you know, that she would have, you know, a child and all that? since I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. I don't know about you guys, but I got goosebumps just reading that. I mean, it's spoken by an angel, but pretty, uh, pretty powerful. Um, then later... Um, Luke chapter 4, we're back to, he's out in the wilderness, and the, the enemy comes to tempt him, and it's another account of this, but in Luke, the devil said to him, if you are, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And then later, um, now this is a little bit different uh, version of uh, the devil tempting him that was not in Matthew, but it says, Luke 4, 9, then he brought him to Jerusalem set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, well, I guess it is similar, but he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. So, okay, yeah, I was thinking he was getting into the third temptation, so my fault there, but so at least, uh, you know, two different gospels record that the devil was saying, if you are the son of God, you know, as if he's trying to make him doubt or whatever, um, then Luke 4, verse 41, And demons also came out of many, many people, crying out and saying, You are the Messiah, the Son of God. And he rebuked them and did not allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ or the Messiah. I mean, that's a whole other subject I'd like to go into. The demons and the devil, they all know who he is, and they knew who he was at the time. Good grief. I mean, and, and they can't help but, you know, say, you are the Christ, or you are the Messiah, you are the Son of God. Okay, so a little bit further in Luke chapter 8, 
uh, verse 27. Well, and this is another, probably, you know, similar account from Matthew when he went on the other side of the Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, getting off the boat, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, neither did he live in a house, but in the tombs, you know, in the graveyard. When he saw Yeshua, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Yeshua, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. Talk about a pretty powerful uh, witness for who, you know, for him being the Son of God. Now, we could all say, ah, demons, you can't trust them, they lie or whatever, but, you know, he wasn't going around whispering to people. He was scared, it sounds like, that Yeshua was going to send him off to torment or whatever. Um, anyhow, take it for what it's worth, but that was Luke 8, 27 and 28. Uh, Luke twenty two, sixty six. As soon as it was day, the elders of the people both chief priests and scribes came together and led him, Yeshua, into their council, saying, If you are the Messiah, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will by no means believe. And if I also ask you, you will by no means answer me or let me go. Hereafter, he says, The Son of Man will sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then they all said, Are you then the Son of God? So he said to them, You right, you rightly say that I am. You can't get any more direct, I mean, other than if he just said, Yes, you know, but... Uh, so they're saying, Oh my gosh, are you claiming to be the Son of God? And he says, You're right in saying that I am. And of course, then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. And, of course, like I said, they got all ticked off and, you know, ranted and raped. All right. Now, lastly, we're in the book of John. Um, just see if we can just finish up the, uh, the different accounts of him being called the Son of God. Um, now, John 1.32. It, it's talking about John the Baptist. And it says, And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him, upon Yeshua. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So John the Baptist is saying flat out, okay? Then later, uh, John 1, 48, you know, a little bit later, Nathaniel, you know, had when he first meets Yeshua after, you know, somebody had him come, come to meet him, Nathaniel said to him, How do you know me? Yeshua answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. I mean, that was enough for Nathanael. He just was like, oh my gosh, you are it. Yeshua answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? He says, you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, most assuredly, assuredly I say to you, hereafter you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. But that's pretty powerful, you know, just the whole little passage there. John 3, 16, we all know that one. Um, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Okay, now that is John the Apostle testifying right there. And three times in that little passage, he refers to him as 
God's Son, or the Son of God, or the only begotten Son of God. In John 5, 24, Yeshua is saying, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. So Yeshua is referring to himself as the Son of God. A couple times there. Uh, later in John 9.35, um, Yeshua heard that they had cast him out. Um, this is a guy that he had healed in the you know earlier. And when he had found the guy, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And the guy answered him and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Yeshua said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. I believe. And he worshipped him. Um, then John 10.33 the Jews answered him, Yeshua, saying, you know, for a good work we do not stone you. Because obviously they they were talking about, they were trying to stone him. And he says, which good work are you stoning me for? We're not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. And because you, being a man, make yourself God. Yeshua, Yeshua answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into this world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God? So there you go again. Yeshua himself said it. If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Anyhow, that's just a pretty good section there. Uh, John 11, verse 4, something was said, oh, it must have been about uh, Lazarus. And it says, when Jesus heard that uh, something about him, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So again, he's talking about himself. Um, John eleven twenty one, still dealing with uh, Lazarus and all. Then Martha said to Yeshua, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Yeshua said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Yeshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. <clears throat> he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Who is to come into the world. Man, that's another powerful passage there. Wow. We're almost done, so bear with me. Um, John 19, verse 7. Now the Jews answered him, and they said, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. So this is in front of Pilate when they're telling him, Look, he made himself the Son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard that saying, he was even more afraid. And he went again into the praetorium and said to Yeshua, Where are you from? But Yeshua gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? And Yeshua answered, You could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Now, I guess I went on a little bit more than I needed to, but um, 
But here the Pharisees or the religious leaders are telling Pilate he made himself to be the son of God or basically claimed that. And that was pretty uh, upsetting to Pilate. Last one I've got here is John 20, verse 30. Uh, oh, and this is just an account from John himself. He says, And truly, Yeshua did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So, in closing, in these accounts in the Gospels, the devil, devil believed that he's the Son of God, but tried to make him doubt. The demons knew it and were afraid of him. A Roman centurion figured it out. Pilate feared that he was, and his followers knew and confessed that he was the Son of Almighty God. So if you're out there and you have any doubts at all, I mean, this is just in the four Gospels. Um, you need to ask God to show you if you haven't realized it by now or if you've had doubts, you know, if you started doubting, you know, some of these things because there's a lot of false teachings out there. Um, I don't know. I just, I hope you'll consider these things because they're right out of the Scripture, right out of the New Testament uh, Gospel accounts and um, all those various personalities or whatever uh, considered him the Son of God. Okay, I'm going to close for now. Yehovah bless you and keep you. Shalom.